Hi. Hello, Arne. Svetlana. It looks as if we're taking a look at an opening again. Is that so? Yes, we are. Nice. We'll be looking at the Pirk's defense. Oh, oh, I thought it was Pirk. You said Pirk. Well, the, the, I, I, I mean, I always pronounce it Pirk because that's, I thought, how the okay. original pronunciation was, but Probably. we can pronounce it Pirk. No, yeah, yeah, but, but you know, yeah. it's the same thing as Alechin and Alakine. True. That you never know which one is right. One of them is used more. You, than you're the absolutely other. right. I think it's one of the first times I heard Pertz, but I guess it is uh, more like the original. Dear ladies and gentlemen at home, have you ever played the Perk or the Pertz? Whatever it is, you know what we're talking about. I guess it is um, the first move going to be e4, e6. No, it D6, is D6. D6. So pardon, right. pardon, pardon. Jeez. For, I had one job and I messed it up. <laughs> if you want to know more about uh, Svetlana Smart Moves and what we're doing here, check the link in the descriptions and all the links in the descriptions because uh, what we are talking about here, the Perk or the Perts Defense, we will uh, take a look at on the Chess Base News site in all details with some analysis from Svetlana. So, yeah, let's dive right into this. I'm looking forward. Yeah, so it's it's an opening for black against first move e4, and we start with g6 uh, with d6. It has a few different um, move orders, so you could also start it with g6, but that would be more called the modern. Mm -hmm. Whenever you start with g6, it can still lead to the exact same position, but <clears throat> this allows white a bit more options. So now white can play either c3 or c4 where we will see in the in the periods it doesn't happen mm -hmm. because right after d4 we play knight f6 and this is what defines um the the period's defense it's um it has a reputation of being a flexible opening but also double-edged and um, there are many top grandmasters i have played it before um there's kramnik there's grishuk mamed yarov ivanchuk who's my favorite um, Svidler, and uh, I'm sure there's many others who have used it, uh, but those are just a few that I would remember. And this has similar setups to the modern and to the King's Indian defense, as I said. But the difference here is that we have played knight to f6 on the, on the second move, so now white is actually forced to decide what to do with that pawn. And pretty much always the reaction is knight c3. Other things aren't really as popular and they don't fight for the center as much. Mm -hmm. So this um, move order is the most forcing one and that's the move order that I would recommend over playing G6. If you want the, in, the position that arises, then probably this is the most forcing move order to do it. Have you ever played it for black? For black, maybe because I made a mouse slip online, but uh, <laughs> besides that, never ever. Uh, Mouse also, from d5 to d6? If so, exactly, yeah. So mm -hmm. if, uh, but I know uh, it is uh, freaking popular. So uh, especially mm -hmm. in the in the quicker time um, games, the fianchetto is just a very popular move after yeah. all. So the perk or the perks is just like one, one step beyond this because there are some plans behind this i mean it also goes into the king's indians kind of a little sometimes right right yeah it is a bit of the king's indian type of structure so the the, the only difference is that there is no c4 here gotcha. for white so yeah but the structure for black is different that's why i mentioned these two mm -hmm. as kind of the brothers of this opening so now white has many ideas um there is there's a lot of moves that white could make. Most typical one is f4. So it's uh, the most ambitious reply from white. It takes up all of the center and it's uh, trying to help the e5 pawn push, which is usually the main idea in these openings. So this is probably the most critical variation to learn if you are going to play this opening um, because it's the most aggressive one and the one where you need to know a bit more than for the other ones. The other ones are a bit more calm. There's just normal development with putting out the knight, bringing out the bishop and castling short, all of that. There's also uh, playing uh, bishop e3 and queen d2, castling long, 
So that's White's other idea. And I think that pretty much sums it up. So either F4, these castle long setups or these castle short setups. Everything else, like things like bishop c4 or g3 or yeah, something like that is not really that popular. Um, the bishop on c4 gets kicked by a6 b5 or c6 b5 and g3 just doesn't really do much on that diagonal, doesn't fight for the space as much. So it, these ones are not as popular. So I think the three main variations are the ones to learn if you're playing um, this opening. But the, um, the first one that I want to look at is, is F4, the most critical one. And I'll do it in a game um, by Mr. Anand. Quite so what do you I think? Heard. Yeah, what do you think are the main um, are the main ideas and pawn breaks for black here while I look for the game? Yeah, so I've seen it a couple of times in, uh, when I was playing against the perch that uh, uh, there often occurs a weird pawn move, but may, I guess it differs. But I remember it is c6 and b5 often enough. Yeah, so that happens. So basically, the perk is a um, hyper modern opening, as we call it, which means that you give up the center in the very beginning and you do that to get a better development, better piece placement. And after that, you start punishing the opponent for overextending. And then you start doing all of these pawn breaks and kind of ruining that center that the opponent has built because you have more development mm -hmm. while the opponent spent time pushing his pawns. So it's part of... Um, modern is also part of it. And uh, and the pair can, is in the same category. Mm -hmm. So the two pawn breaks that we usually go for are either e5 or c5. Oh, and oops. Okay. that's that, that's basically what you would mostly go for. The c6 and b5 is also pretty popular, but it that kind of depends on what white set, sets up. So mm -hmm. if c5 isn't possible, then you would probably go for the c6 and probably b5. Probably that's the, the reason. Key, yeah. The queen side attack is very common, though, if the opponent castles queen side. So you just have to see what the opponent decides. Mm -hmm. So we'll look at f4, which is the Austrian. It's called the Austrian attack, and it's the most critical line against uh, against the pair. So it's the most space for white, and it looks the most threatening one. Um, now, you would continue as normal with bishop g7. They will develop a knight, and you will castle. So that's kind of our main position from where it can go different routes. Uh, the main thing to look at is where does the opponent castle? And um, in this game that we're looking at, it's Bielowski against Anand. It was played in 1991. So it's a pretty old game, but you know, there's still, there, it's still a very nice game to show, uh, the, to show this opening. So in the game, bishop e3 happened. This is not mandatory. And of course, white could go more for the other side castling with bishop d3, but that, but that way we will go as we will develop as normal and play something along those lines. So e5 is a common one, and then the knight goes to d5. So because the bishop has blocked the uh, has blocked the d file, now our knight can actually have this d5 square. Okay. And e5 is white's main idea on which we can also take, but I actually kind of like knight d7 and uh, it's yeah, a pretty, often. yeah, it's, it's just a pretty crazy line. I can show you, I will not make you guess any moves because it's impossible, but it has some crazy lines like this and this, and this is actually an Ivanchuk game Wow. that, uh, yeah, he got a worse Holy position moly. and then he won somehow. <laughs> it's, it's just crazy. I don't even need to explain these moves because even if I want to explain, I probably can't. And uh, I mean, it just gets to crazy positions. Of course, um, that is not does not happen in every line, but that's just uh, that's just what happens when you play Ivanchuk because he's just a very creative player. So anyway, in this game, White plays Bishop e3 and uh, keeps the options for castling open, and now. It seems like um, c5 and e5 one breaks are a bit hard. Which one do you think we're going to be more focused on now that white is kind of castling? 
queen side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, I wanted to say c5 is probably not a good idea because even the bishop is behind there on e3. But mm -hmm. yes, of course, you're right. Uh, white will castle queen side. So why not give open more lines on the queen file and go for c5? Right. So we are going to try to still play c5. So that's the decision that you can make for yourself whenever you see how the opponent sets up the pieces and you think, yeah, c5 is more useful here. The opponent is castling queen side and you want to open that long diagonal for your bishop. That would be great. So that's why Anand plays b6, which mm -hmm. is one of the lines. You could also try to play this through a6 and then with b5, but that's just another option. I like b6 because we right away develop the bishop and going to attack on e4. So now his opponent, Bilyavsky, played e5. Yeah, this is as always into, striking me as it crazy. Looks, it looks very... Um, it looks very good for the opponent, yes, right? but it never is. And this is really annoying for me as a white player too, because I play a very similar system. Then I'm making this move. Then I think like, okay, this should be an advantage, but it isn't. Right. Um, so first of all, what would, what would you play as black here? Where do you think the knight will go? Or will you take the pawn maybe? You... Um, which one would you decide? And what you mentioned is actually interesting because I find that that happens a lot in those hyper-modern openings where where the opponent gets a false sense of security because yeah. you have your center, you feel like you haven't done anything wrong, all of your pieces went to the right squares, but suddenly there's all of these pawn breaks and you need to suddenly be very careful about what to do about them or else you can lose your center and only be left with weaknesses. So that's one of the, I think, reasons why people play these openings is, uh, is that it happens so often that yeah. uh, opponents don't even, don't even see that... Uh, the opponent has counterplay because they think they have a lot of space. So where, where do you think we will go? Well, I think theoretically correct is knight to d7, but uh, moving on g5 almost looks as if we're winning a little bit of a tempo like this. Also, we don't need the knight that urgent anymore. So now the exactly. problem knight is, yeah, is good. The problem is just if the yeah, actually, it isn't bad, because even if the bishop moves away, that's kind of nice. But then we have to go to h6 if, yeah. if we were being pushed by h3. That's actually one of the ideas of this opening, yeah. is that after e5 has been pushed, you now have the f5 square yeah. that your knight can go to. So this maneuver, well, of course, we're not going to go knight g4 for nothing. It's if the bishop is there, then we only go. Uh, but... Sure. The knight to h6, this is what happened in the game. It looks yeah. strange, but it's good because the knight can come to f5 and that's a perfect square for it. So now oh, you might okay. worry about g4 exactly. or, or things like yes. that, but this is actually not worrisome because you've already started your central attack. So you can just take everything there, start attacking things. And this looks very good for black wow. already. I'm okay. sure that it's um, equal or if not more for black. That looks very good, yeah. So white cannot really spend too much time on the pawn moves. And in the game, he plays d5. Now, I'll show a few more moves. So he just developed pieces, placed his knight onto a 5 threatening bishop knight g3. H2. So bishop h2 has been played, because or else knight Aye, okay, 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 okay. He took, took, and here, next move is very important. So try to find it. Try to find which strong move Anand found to kind of blow up the center. And you at home as well, if you ever have a situation where Svetlana says, like, what do you think is going to be the next move? Why not pause the video? Think for your own personal time. You can download the games anyway. You have them as a PGN. You can put them in your repertoire, open a new database on Chessbase, call it Pertz. And there you have it, your very first Pertz database. And then you can compare it with the mega database and so on but uh, okay so what is going to be the strong disrupting move well i'm looking at bishop to h6 but it doesn't really disrupt the the center that much so maybe it is simply e6 e6 is right so 
it it looks like positionally a wrong decision, but it's actually the the best decision there is. Well, do you did you think about what to do on d6? That's yes, the main so, one to calculate. Uh, okay, no, but I thought like it's good or uh, nice because we can get our knight to c6 now. Also, the diagonal of the bishop is quite uh, lovely. Um, right. So your idea yeah. with knight c6 could be done through knight d7, so that we are threatening to take on f3 and take on e5. And there's actually not really much to do about it. Oh. Um, unless white wants to spend a lot of tempi, and I don't even think it's possible. So we're just going to win the pawn on e5, and huh. black is just winning after that. So that's the idea of his e6 move, mm -hmm. which could have been missed for that reason. And it is a very strong move. So what always what we do in, in this opening is we try to blow up the opponent's center. Good. Sounds then castling very peaceful <laughs> castling happened and now we of course are going to take it we're not going to allow d6 and knight c6 so now black managed to develop every single piece both bishops are doing great the knight are doing the knights are doing great and so the next task is to kind of find the place for the queen and the rooks and to start finally an attack on the white king that's how you would play this opening now, the rest is not an opening, but it's a very short game, so I'll show the rest of it as well. Mm -hmm. um, but um, that's how you would play this opening, and I would be really happy to get this position out of the opening. Um, so that's kind of how you can play against these four pawns, um, this four pawns line. And as you see, it only takes a few moves to actually destroy that center if you do it quickly enough and you have all of your pieces developed on the right spots. Mm -hmm. So now uh, white plays c3, and I want to ask you what you would do next here. Hmm. It's a bit of a surprising move, um, but once you see it, you'll, and you'll immediately understand why it was played. Hmm, that sounds tricky. Ah, yeah, okay, okay. So now, once again, I'm looking at bishop to h6, which is now pretty, pretty evil. Okay, bishop h6 actually leads to some crazy variations. I'll show you. So bishop f4 is the only way to protect that diagonal. Yeah. Right? Um, and now we can have a queen Yes, I just wanted to... I look Were at you it, looking I at that? I see it, and yes, you, I guess you get uh, enough pieces for that back. So if they take the back, you do get a very good position, I must admit, because you're going to win back one Lovely. of the rooks. The queen has no squares where it wouldn't get forked. So this would be pretty great. Wow. Um, you still don't get, you currently have only two pieces, so it's a bit risky, but also the problem is that white has bishop h6. And I mean, this just gets crazy. I don't know um, how you would even go for it in an actual game, but I'm sure you would. But yeah, I mean, you're down on exchange, but good attacking chances. So bishop h6, I think, is really interesting. It's one of the riskier versions. There's like a bit of a more safe one. And basically, why did white play c3? Uh, to avoid the knight going to d4 or even b4. Yeah, and that's, that's a okay. bit of a hint. Yes, so... How about we can change that... Hmm. Hmm. It doesn't mean we can we have to change, but no, we sure. cannot really do that. Um. Hmm. You gave yourself the hint and then took it away. <laughs> can we still do what you said we wanted to initially? Uh, go to h six with the bishop. You mean, or no? What did I White's say? idea of oh, yeah. c3 was preventing knight, like you said, knight before, knight d4. Okay. Uh, that has to be calculated. So, knight c to d4. Exactly. That's what an unplayed and it was the That's best move. That's crazy. My goodness. I mean, it's not that crazy once you no? think about it because you're not even sacrificing that knight. You're just trading it. Oh, yeah, it true. Now I'm just seeing it. D5. I didn't see that. So, okay. <laughs> so it's not that crazy. Um, now, this is what happened in the game, and that was the good move that I wanted you to find. Mm -hmm. So white now plays knight f6 to get rid of that knight that's being attacked. 
Of course, we have to take it. They take it. We move our bishop, and now the pawn is back to d5. We just got rid of Funny. it, but it's back. Yeah, but it's like a hydra pawn. <laughs> that came at a cost of his king being more open. Mm -hmm. So what do you think our next plan would be in a position like that for black? Oh. Do you like black, by the way? <clears throat> Here. So so, I guess yes. Really, I I, I, I like to play these as black. I, I I'm pretty sure a computer would give a good evaluation for black, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm in terms I'm, of plan, yes. what do you think we can do? That's the part I'm thinking of. <coughs> mm. That's not working. That's not working. Even the general plan, what, even what side of the board will you be playing on? Definitely still the queen side. So, right. yeah, what do we do here? Maybe, no, that's also not working. Queen A E8? I see no, why it's queen not e working. It just doesn't attack anything for yeah. now, right? That's why we want the queen back on D8. And we want really want to open up the queen side. We already see that the C file is open. Yeah. So we want to open up the queen side. So that's why the move that makes sense is C4. Okay, I thought about this. It cannot this. be taken. And it cannot be taken. That's the joke, yeah. Because of uh, rook C8. So we're actually just going to play C4, threatening some C3 in the future, and bring the rook to the C file. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe the concerning thing is things like G4, but... They're actually not dangerous here because of knight e7, and we do end up winning that pawn on d5 because it cannot be pushed because of the knight on c3, oh. f3, and we actually end up winning the pawn. So that's, I think, was the necessary precaution to kind of look at before thinking of a move here, and that's why c4 works. So the game continued with a few more moves. Finally, the bishop came to h6. <laughs> it made it's a about trade. time. And here is the next question. Do we take or do we not take on d5? d5. Do we take or do we not take? That doesn't help. That doesn't help. That doesn't help. That does help. So if the queen goes to d4 after... No, cannot. <laughs> and mm -hmm. to d2 can also not... Hmm. I, th I think it's risky and I would have to calculate a lot, but I don't see any threat now. I think we can... Exactly. So you take it. That's why... I mean, it's a bit scary sometimes to take the it material is. of the opponent, but... I don't lately I I feel like it's it's mostly about what you calculate and not what you know what the opponent calculates mm -hmm. because they also sometimes bluff. And maybe this is one of those cases where he had nothing better than to give it up. And of course, once you see a pawn like that, that's why it's best thing in the position, you will take it. And there is nothing to do to win that bishop really. So this is actually not dangerous. If anything, knight e7 defends it and you're good. Um and the game continued with h4, c3, of course, what we wanted all along, h5, and I'll make you find one last tactic. So black brought the pieces there, the knight went to e3, but white is trying to oh, no. be tricky here and play a knight h7. What is the final tactic here that, that we have from is black? Rook b3 check. Exactly, rook b3 check. They're gonna. The game ended yes. at rook b3. But uh, what happens if they take? We go to c2 with the queen, give a check. Sounds good, yeah. Uh, then I would go to c3. Okay, yeah. Then I would give another check on b3. Mm -hmm. and, and now I will checkmate. Right, so whenever wherever he goes, c1, queen, c2 mates, and a1, queen, a2 mates. So that was the game of, on the... <laughs> On the pyrrhic defense by Anand, and it was a very aggressive. As you can see, it can be a very aggressive opening, and um, whenever sides castle, whenever you castle on different sides, it's uh, it can be a very fun one as well. So totally. I have another game though, mm -hmm. um, which we can look at, which includes a different variation. So the way I like learning separate variations is 
by actually attributing a game to them, especially if this game went rather far into into the theory portion. Mm -hmm. Then you can remember that game and that way, uh, or at least the direction in which that game went, like which plans did Anand play here? And you'll remember that Anand went for b6 and c5, right? And he brought his knight to h6. You don't even need to remember the move order, but you just remember these key ideas. And that's how you can even learn um, an opening by just a few games. So this game was fr- by, um, it was Caruana playing against Ivanchuk. Mm. My, I, I love Ivanchuk. It's uh, one of my favorite players, as you know, because he was one of the most creative ones of our time. <laughs> and um, so it started with D4. So the, this can actually start with different move orders. So even on D4, um, if you want, you can try to play uh, the same exact structure. So the chances are that the opponent might play c4 as well. So it might tr- transpose into something like the king's Indian more. Oh, okay. But you can still try for it because some, some opponents can still play e4 here. And now we're transposed to exactly what we're used to with knight, knight f6. Is there ever a variation where you push the pawn to e5? No, right? It's just, it doesn't make for any black? sense. No, no, for, for white. For black, you do. No, no, for, you... for, for white. Like after the second very move, instead of, uh, yeah, exactly mm. here. I mean, you're yeah, talking no. queens and you have to go back with the king. It doesn't make any yeah, sense. Yeah, you're going right? to take, I think, and just play knight g4. And, then and there's two pawns back. attack. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. Once. You're so losing a pawn immediately. Yeah, okay. so okay, that's, just that is actually get not this good for me. Out of the way, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the more sensible one is maybe bishop d3, which is also yes, theory. Yes, I've seen that but, too. I mean, here you can just choose what to play. You can pro- Now you're probably going to play more for the e5 plan, maybe c5 as well, mm-hmm. but I'm sure you have a bunch of moves. You have knight c6, for example. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. You can continue with g6. Yeah, it's a lot of things. Um, most people, like, 95% of the time is just going to be nice. Yeah, pardon for um, the interruption. Oh, no, no, not at all. So now in this game, we'll look at another variation, which will be bishop e3 and queen d2 variation, um, which is the other main setup that I've mentioned. And there's one more that I've said, but I didn't really cover it. So I'll do it now just to know what to do on the short castle type mm-hmm. of thing for white. So what we're going to do is just to fan uh, the bishop, castle, that's all usual. So now we get here, and this is a position with kind of a bit of choice for you. So you can either go for c6 plans and knight d7 and e5 plan. So you could do this. That's why they play c6 so That often. and that. Yeah, so c6 is really useful there. Um, it's... Uh, also, you prepare some b5, mm-hmm. but I personally like playing through a6, so I like playing like that so that there's also the diagonal for the bishop. So I like that bishop diagonal yes. better than putting it on g4. So that is also possible. If the opponent ever plays a4, which is rather common, I mean, you just play b6, right? And you still develop it like that. You just have a little less space, but you're still supporting your c5 plans. Okay. So I like these setups. You can... This these b5 and bishop b7 ideas are still possible, but also but what is I guess more theoretical is to play knight c6 and to play e5. So that is um, I mean th- that's the main plan in the king's Indian defense, right? So here it is also working with e5. You can also go for the c5 ones. The computer likes the c5 um, in this particular position. Computer likes it a little less I think to just play for c5 here because there's no longer some um, yeah. attack on the queen side as much. But you can still go for both plans. As long as you just know both e5 and c5, you can see based on the situation and based on where the opponent's pieces are, you can see which one you want to go for more. And if this bishop ever comes to e3, then you can already know that you might have some knight g4 idea in the future. So that's what you would do at short castle. The short castle ones are the more like the less exciting ones. Because there's n- like no crazy attack on both sides, but it's still a pretty dynamic and tactical opening apart from that. So um, now this one is a bit different than the previous one with the Austrian because here 
white does not commit to a four. So they don't overextend too much, but they still try to keep their center. Um, so now the main move is c6. Mm -hmm. We're preparing some b5. So in the game, Caruana played bishop h6, and I'll get to that move in a second. But I think the more or less the more popular one is f3, which yeah. in the in the King's Indian, that would be the more like Semish variation because we did a lesson on the King's Indian. That would be more in that direction. And maybe the ideas are like a bit similar. Um, so here we would have the attack on both sides. And it's a, it's a bit of a, a wild variation with both pawns on both sides. We play b5, they play g4, and then like the pawns can Ooh. keep running. The important thing to know on g4, if they have played this g4 move, what you can, how you can react to it is h5. So this is useful for the Whoa. reason that you don't allow the opponent's pawn to go h4, h5. Because when that happens, then it can come to h6, then it can open h takes mm -hmm. g, and then if your king is already there, that's a problem. So h5 is a nice move if you force the opponent's pawn to do something. Because the pawn is forced, or else it will be lost. Why did it go to the very end? <laughs> so, so the pawn has to go to g5. And I mean, that we just continue. So we managed to close things down a bit on the king side so that we can maybe castle there later. And yeah, we just reroute our knight. We're going to play b4 later or maybe knight c4. And we have our own attack. They have their own attack. And it's counterplay for both sides. Okay. So I like this variation. Um, but in the game, bishop h6 happened. So when you see this, I mean, this looks a bit scary. Do you think, what do you think you would do about this bishop attack? I would give up now because I am always playing this as white. And I right. hope my opponent goes like, that's it. Well, often enough, uh, this is what I can tell from experience is that the black is just castling. Right. And that's why I wanted to make this distinction is because castling is actually wrong to do because of h4. So I really don't like these positions with h4 I because <laughs> now, yeah, of course, like that's why people do them as white. That's that's yeah. the dream of the player who yep, does yep, this as yep. white. True. You get h4. And I mean, if you just continue developing normally, they're going to take it at some point and play h5. Problem is they'll take on g6 next turn and play queen h6. Six. Queen h6. Yeah. So even if you take, that doesn't stop them. G4 is beautiful. Exactly. Yeah, this is my kind of game. And this is already... And yeah, now yeah, this, this, is lost. this knight on f6 gets dodged. And yeah. good knight black. Exactly. So that's why I wanted to say if white plays this immediately bishop h6, it is really important to just take that bishop right away mm -hmm. and uh, to not go for that castling just yet. Oh, so, taking is the other yeah. option because there's no other options anymore, right? Right, I, yeah. yeah. You, that's the only thing you can do about that bishop. Wow. Um, and then you wait a bit on the castling and you play bishop, queen a5. That's what Ivanchuk did. Okay. Bishop d3 continued. And now what do you think is going to be our favorite pawn break? Which one do we go for in this scenario? Mm, now this time it's going to be I guess well, why though five bop 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 hmm I'm looking at e5 and mm -hmm. also b5 mm-hmm Okay, I was choosing between c5 and e5. Okay. But so e5 has a big problem. It's that the queen goes queen g7 and your knight is and rook both are loose. So e5 actually will lose a piece. Terrible. Which is yeah. not oh, great for true. us. So How did I miss that? My goodness. the okay. right pawn break is c5. to play c5. Yeah. b5 looks pretty interesting too, so I wouldn't think that's a huge mistake but c5 is the main move and the main pawn break that we like to play for mm -hmm. now white played knight here um knight c6 normal development white of course took the center as they usually do in this opening knight e5 and 
bishop b5. Now, what would you play for black? How do we defend against that check? It seems like a simple question, but it's uh, not that simple. Isn't it? I immediately thought about bishop c... Uh, sorry, d7. But... Yeah. But Ivanchuk is playing this position. Yeah. So, so he obviously... King d8. That's what he did. And I find that move amazing. It's actually the best move. Wow. It's way better than the other uh, coverings uh, of the check. The reason is because you're not castling short anyways right now. So it's not like you're kind of keeping your kings, keeping your kings right to castle is pretty, mm -hmm. is not really that important here. And this bishop d7, I mean, they will just capture. Looks pretty normal. I think this is still a position with both sides counterplay. But of course, Ivanchuk is a very creative player, so he plays king d8 with no fear at all. So now this next move is pretty important, though, which is one of the reasons why this king d8 move was played. Um, and it is how to make the bishop on b5 uncomfortable. This mm. is why we played king d8, so that um, the bishop doesn't get its trade. And we want that bishop to be stuck on b5. So what about queen b6? Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, why not? The reason why I don't like queen too b long, though. b6 is, the, yeah, it's because we kind of want to do things more quick here. And our queen is already on a perfect spot. Yeah. They're making a pin and yeah. Hmm. How can we make him uncomfy? Oof. Well, we could just play. A. No, that doesn't help. <laughs> you never a. say what you actually yes, thought about. Yes, because I just like uh, re refuted immediately. But a six, I thought about, mm -hmm. but it doesn't help. It just the well, bishop, the bishop just runs away. B two, and that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how uh, do we block him from there? Ah, yeah, yeah. C four. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Was, so, but I really thought about it a second ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why we didn't want that trade. That's and nice. that's exactly what Ivanchuk played. So now the interesting part is that after h3, so of course white is trying to play f4 mm -hmm. and they played h3 in prevention of knight g4. So now Ivanchuk actually missed a really nice win, but let's see if you can find it let's instead see. of him. So it's black to move. Yeah, uh, do you want to know what Ivanchuk played? Yeah, yeah, just go for it. He played a6. That... And it was met by f4. And both pieces were attacked. Oh. But he can actually win the piece without allowing this. Okay, that's super interesting. Ah, okay. Is it just uh, we take it on b5? And if they take back, we push to b4? Uh, I think that's... No, I mean, no, that's not what... It... Oh, okay. happened it's similar to what happened um but we don't win anything because our our knight is also on f6 attacked sure <sighs> so you know the opponent's defensive idea and you know your peace winning idea so if we could prevent if we could make that f4 not work that would actually solve it, and the bishop remains trapped. Hmm. F4 is really annoying because I thought that queen b6 is really good, but it isn't after f4. <laughs> yeah, and the problem is that our knight actually has nowhere to go other yeah. than give itself up for the bishop with knight d7. Ha, huh, I'm not, uh, can't find it at the moment. Well, that's Ivanchuk also missed this win, so it's not. Well, okay, so what about? Uh, I'm always looking at knight g4, to be honest. It's not really trapping no. the queen because okay. the queen okay. can always go then, to. Then you please, please solve it. Okay, it's not. It's actually, I think it's just a hard move to even notice it exists. But once you think about it, the idea is f4. How do you prevent f4? Just stop f4 for one move. What? Uh, G5? 
it is g5. So I don't know why you're so hesitant to go g5. But g5 is the move, and it wins what? a piece. So, I mean, Ivanchuk didn't play it either, so it's it's a pretty hard move to come up with. But okay. the point is yes, please. that, of course, the queen is going to take it, or else, well, we play a6 next move, and we win the piece. There is no longer the f4 idea. So oh, okay. now we actually can do that. And f4 is not a big deal, because our knight has an extra space that we just opened up which is knight to g6. That is so cool. But don't feel too bad because Ivanchuk missed it. <laughs> so. But that is really, really nice. That's a very It is nice a nice idea. idea. Yeah. It's very logical once you see it, but before seeing it is actually hard to even make this g5 move. Yeah. Because it looks so wrong. It looks just really wrong to play it, but it is the best. So that's how you could have won this piece. But instead, what happened in the game is they made sort of a trade. So now the knight had nowhere to go, so it just gave itself up on f3 and... For the king! The <laughs> and it took the bishop. So the game continued. Uh, white played castles. Black played b4. So, see, or even though white made the castling on the, queen si on the king side, we can still have some activity on the queen side with some of our pawns so now this this position is a bit unconventional because white was going to castle queenside but because of all of these tactics happened they didn't anymore um so what do you think is the next plan going to be for black um and what will you really do about your king in the long term yeah, so the king can be moved to b8, maybe. It's a nice, rather solid spot, I think. Yeah, the king can stay on the queen side. That's the right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the right idea here. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're struggling to find a plan, uh, do you remember what we have to think about? Uh, to make the best piece, uh, the, the worst piece to... to... Yeah, so which ones of our pieces are not working piece. yet? Yes. So as so often, it's the bishop on c8. Mm -hmm. uh, the rook on a, uh, a8. Uh, the <laughs> rook on h8 too. Yeah. So the moves are pretty simple, actually. Are they, though? Okay, so... Um, boop. Boop, boop. No, so I don't think I can move the rook on h8 too much. Though... Yeah, we, we want to connect them, right? Yeah. That's what would be nice. So we've already mentioned the right pieces. So is it just the king move to c7? That's what happens next move, um, like in a few moves, but we just okay. start with bishop d7. Because, bishop d7, okay. I mean, the bishop has nowhere else yeah, to go, yeah, so you start yeah, with yeah. the bishop. That's exactly what you do. It's a bit of an odd position. Um, it's just a bit strange with all the king, with both king placements. So if you ever don't know what to do, well, we talked in one of the middle game lessons that whenever you don't know, you just improve your worst piece. Yes. And here we look, what is the piece that's not developed yet? And it is the bishop. So you make the bishop join, and you, we also make the... So they played c3 there, so I'm just giving these few. And then next time you have a free, free move, you just continue with your plan and we connect the rooks. And yeah, both kings look a bit strange here, but I mean, they're both fairly safe. So the game is um, in its middle, but uh, we won't see the whole, uh, we won't see the whole thing. Sure. I'll just show where it actually became winning for black. Um, so, of course, white's main plan is still always e5. So if you're ever playing against this opening as white, you probably already saw that the main, main move, the main plan that white always goes for is e5. Mm. Pretty much no matter what, that's what happens in these pawn structures. Even without knowing, because I do this sometimes too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very natural move and usually good. You just need to make sure not to overextend your pawns and lose them in the process, because that is Black's main idea. So what actually happened here is I find it really funny how this queen on h6 hasn't moved since then and hasn't done anything useful since that moment that it came here. 
Um, I mean, the useful thing it did was to prevent our castling, but our king didn't want to do that anyway. Um, so the queen ended up being the main problem here. Mm -hmm. And um, now Ivanchuk finally finds g5. And the idea is that oh, um, okay. I had the to queen is like almost something. trapped. If the yeah, so none of these captures are working. So he takes here first, and then he takes here with the knight. So in case he took with the bishop, this would, uh, I mean, with the queen, this would actually be better because... We just take an f4. We, uh, no, this would be better for white, I meant, because oh. oh, he just won a piece and he just needs to defend that piece one more time. The, his knight on g3, of course, he's going to lose that knight on, g th on g3, but he can at least have some counterplay. Yeah, this is a perfect spot for a knight, not good. So we force not the rook to capture on g3 because mm -hmm. that would be deadly, but you force instead the pawn, and if the pawn captures, then you're more or less safe. So that was White's best shot to do that. But even that's probably a draw because you just keep chasing the queen, and it's a perpetual on the queen, which is mm -hmm. always a fun way to end the game. But this was possible to happen. But instead, he took with the knight, and this made the queen pretty much trapped, and he had to give it up. But queen h7 is not working because... Queen h7, we can look at that. Queen h7 might actually be the better move than knight e4. So now oh, we, of course, take... Made. I mean, uh, I don't know, but it's looking dangerous. So I think That's... he just has to like take it because... Yeah, 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 yeah. That looks terrifying. Queen f2, no? Yeah, yeah. looks very bad. I think black is winning. So... That's why it was scary to do. So he tried to make the queen trade. And I think what he underestimated was that we, we do all these moves, they're forced. I mean, it's a really long variation, but sometimes these forced things happen. Oh, he doesn't take the pawn on h3 now. He has time. He, no, okay. he, he didn't do that. So. But rook g8 is probably coming up next or something. Oh, you don't know. Okay. The material is equal, but... Which side would you rather play for? Well, black, obviously. It has the do you open think it's line the... and everything. And it's what I was surprised is that I, I looked at this and I'm like, yeah, why, black is looking good, you know, getting having the pressure, and then the computer just says it's winning for black. So that that's also valid. That's okay. also valid. But it's really about the bishop being so good and the knight not having any good outposts, mm -hmm. right? The knight's strength is when it has a really nice outpost, when it can attack pawns, when it can't be really kicked out. But here, all the knight does is just getting kicked out and <laughs> going to wrong squares. And that's why this bishop here is just so, so much better. Mm -hmm. And um, the game just ends pretty quickly after that because the pawn gets one. And once one pawn is there, then it can become a passer. And uh, that's how... He leaves. Oh. So you kind of trick you 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 yeah. were think you trick the opponent that you're going to push your h pawn, but instead then you push the c pawn, and that's what nice. won the game. But yeah, that was another game in this opening. Wow. And that's, uh, that's... it's another nice one that you can see the ideas in. Yeah. That even if you get prevented from castling, as we saw sometimes, the king can go even on the queen side. But that was just one of the. One of the lines that white can go for, mm -hmm. this bishop h6, which I think is pretty common, especially in fast time controls. And I think this opening is really good for fast time controls because you can have a lot of tactics, exactly. you know your pawn breaks, and you can get some fun positions, especially with opposite side castling. So that's it about the perk. Do you have any questions about it? I No, not at all. It's, uh, I just want to say it's like so interesting to get to know those openings which you do not play at least in my opinion i think it is uh, also very very interesting for the viewers at home who like to play the perk or the perks and already know most of their tactics their schemes and then just take a look at some famous games of how they have occurred and just get all this back into the memory so thank you very much svetlana this was uh very very smart moves indeed uh, we see each other soon again. Looking forward to this. Have a good day. Bye-bye.